Want to get better at World of Tanks? I'm your WAT coach, 13 Disciple, and this is Coach's Corner. All right, welcome back, guys. Today we have the pleasure of watching our friend Dumpster Fire in his what appears to be a quite stock Jackson. All right, something to note about this particular M36 Jackson. We can see that his hit points is 630, and just by looking at it, there's no cover over the top center of the turret, so we know right away that he's using the uh, the starting turret on this vehicle. Also, if we look at the reload timer, it's showing 2.8 seconds, which means he also is using the 76 millimeter gun and not the 90 millimeter gun. So before we even get into the tank lineup, some things we want to know is that we have the base stock gun, so we have fewer hit points. Uh, this, I think it's the same view range both ways around, um, but we also have higher DPM but less penetration. So we want to make sure that we put our vehicle in a location where we can get constant damage on enemy vehicles. All right, so let's take a look at the vehicle lineup. Okay, so we have a two tier lineup here, which isn't too scary. There is a lot of artillery, so maybe playing the field isn't a great idea. We see there is one top tier, two middle tiers with one that has low range, but on a map that's as small as Angst, it may not matter all that much. Apart from that, we see an auto loader light, which is probably the scariest tank on their team. Maybe the Comet's pretty scary too. A lot of low tier lights. And then the rest is mostly filled out with some uh, with some mediums. We got this Hellcat in here and uh, the IKV I'd expect to play the field. So judging by the lineup with only having one heavy tank in the game, I actually think that playing in the city will be pretty light on vehicles. I would expect maybe the Poodle or the T3045M to also go city uh, with probably the KV-85. So let's uh, let's just take let's take a look at the mini map here. OK, so remembering what we saw, um, there's a lot. There's not very many heavies. So playing in this area, we might be able to get our gun in here. That could help our team quite a bit. Right off the bat, I would say there's a few good locations. There's this nice bush right here that you can actually get double bushed in sitting way far behind it. And you'll have shots in this area. Um, they'll have to come out, but you'd have shots here. And you'd have some shots uh, down here, and depending on how close you're willing to get, you could get shots up in here, but you'll be risking your vehicle uh, getting all the way out into this area. Keep in mind that the building that is in this area is destructible, so if, they're, if they know you're back here, they may try and destroy this building, in which case, if they start doing that, it, you gotta get out before that building gets destroyed. Uh, you can sit way back here, but this provides fewer angles of attack and less, um, basically let fewer targets will be available to you. Another thing you can try to do is line up in one of these areas on the railroad tracks and look for tanks that are crossing here. Um, depending on your camo value, this can be a really good play. You can get crossing damage, which is unreturnable fire usually, especially if you limit uh, the amount of your vehicle that is exposed. We do notice that even with these Binox right here deployed, we still don't have maximum view range. So in order to spot vehicles that are crossing for ourselves, we'll have to be pretty close. So think like the corner of this building here is probably how close you'll need to be. You might be able to be close enough at the back of this railroad car, but you might not if their light tanks are crossing. OK, so for me personally, um, it's a crapshoot. If I, if I see at least a, a few of my tanks heading into the city, I'll probably support them because I don't want to be sitting spotted in a field with three artillery, especially with uh, tier six artillery and tier five artillery that has really fast firing guns, such as the FE-304 and M44. Those are both tier six, not five. So I would probably try to avoid the field uh, for that reason alone. All right, so that's the analysis. Let's get into this gameplay. If you're new here, I'm 13 Disciple. I consider myself a coach. The Watt Coach is what I call myself. Um, you can find me and uh, watch me live on Twitch every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday evening. I try to do this sort of commentary, except while I'm playing my own vehicle, so you can help understand the thought process behind my positioning, where I'm going, what I'm looking for, and as I analyze the minimap and the macro sort of decisions that I make based on that. 
All right, so it looks like we are setting up for this crossing. It looks like we might be a little slow getting in here because as we can see, there's already two mediums on our team that have already crossed. So any mediums on the enemy team may have already crossed. We do have this. Okay, we're gonna have to knock down a wall. We're gonna, okay. So let's, um, Let's pause this and talk about what, what we're actually able to do here. So number one, let me point this out for you. There is a bunch of walls here that go all the way across this gap, okay? Soft cover and I can, well, destructible hard cover does block line of sight. So if you're trying to spot any vehicles that are crossing in these two gaps, you won't see them. So what you want to do is you want to load an HE round and you want to shoot the joint in between these pillars to knock the, the full wall down. And basically you can knock two pieces of wall down with one shot if you can hit right at the joint because the splash of the HE will hit both objects, okay? So it'll take two HE rounds to give us view enough to get in there. And which sections do we need to take out? So in order to figure that out, let's go into our view here and we'll zoom on over and see what we're actually looking at from the enemy team's perspective. So which segments do we want to knock down? Well, what you want to do from your position over there is you wanna use your turret to line up your aimer into the two different sections and you wanna see when your aimer bisects here, these are the wall pieces you want to take down. Or where your aimer bisects here, you want to take down these wall pieces in this area, okay? But there's one thing I really need to point out here, okay? Let me rotate the camera so we can see it even easier. Your blue line is your view range, and your view range barely covers the edge of this building here, okay? That means any vehicle that's crossing in this area will never be spotted by you. You're just not, you're not gonna be able to spot anything. It could be a type five crossing there and you won't spot them because you just don't have the view range. All right. So the only way that you're spotting any crossing vehicle is if they come across this way, which is like the worst possible choice. And I wouldn't expect any of my enemy enemies to be doing that move unless they were desperate to get into this area for some reason. And maybe they would go like this. The only tank that you might spot, yeah, is the tank that's doing this. Otherwise, you're not spotting anything, especially when you leave all of this hard or this destructible cover up here. So first you need to destroy this hard cover or the destructible cover, and then you need to make sure that your view range is deep enough to spot the crossing. So even if you did have max view range and it hit this building here, this is still only four or five meters. So any tank that has even some camouflage, you're still not gonna be able to spot in this crossing because a tank with, you know, two or 3% camo rating will lower your view range by two or 3%, which will then reset it back to this area and they just won't be spotted. So the big thing to realize is that the area you're looking for damage, you can't actually see yourself. What you're relying on is somebody here or somebody that isn't here, but, sh but could be there. And what you're relying on them doing is spotting them early and hoping that they stay lit through the entire crossing here. And if they do, then you might be able to get a crossing shot. But as it stands, in the position you're in right now, you're just not able to do any crossing damage. So the position you're in isn't helping your team at all, unless they're trying to come up this side. In which case, I would argue a better position to be in would actually be here, because sometimes tanks do drive up this area and they'll stutter up on these buildings for cover. And sometimes if you view through here, you can you can detect that early enough that you can prevent them from getting crossfire into this area. But in order to get your view range deep enough, you'd probably have to be down here at this train here or next to this building here in order to actually spot this crossing successfully. So that's the biggest positioning error that I can see at the moment. We can see a vast majority of our allies have stayed in the field and they're pushing through that field. There's not a lot of enemies lit. So I don't want to commit with the STRV-74 or the P-43 just yet because we don't have a good idea of how many tanks are in the city. Because if we look at our mod here, 
it's showing that there are a lot of tanks still not spotted. Almost the whole team. So if every single tank that hasn't been spotted, other than artillery, we won't, we won't count those, is in this area, and you push with your STRV or your P43, you'll just get overwhelmed really quickly. So it's good to not get committed until we have more information on the other side of the flank. So I'm just watching the minimap and what's spotted to see how many vehicles are on the 890 area, and it looks like quite a few. So that means the KV-85, possibly the Comet, and the Hellcat or Type might be in the city. Okay, we see the T-3045 did get spotted in the city. We obviously don't have shots on him where he's at. The KV-85 is in our side. So the big question is, is where is the Comet? Without knowing where the Comet is, he could be anywhere on the map. And if he's with the KV-85, our STRV-74 will get annihilated pretty fast. Looks like the STRV has vision in this area and it's just the KV-85. Okay, so my, this is my suggestion right now is we need to have an impact in this battle, okay? Right now we've done pretty much nothing, okay? And I'm not trying to be, um, I'm not trying to be mean about it. I'm just trying to point out like what you're contributing to the team is not a lot of help for them because we see that they've only lost one tank. We've already lost three, including our tier seven artillery. We've got a big battle happening on the other side of the map and one minor one happening here. And we still have a silent gun and we don't have vision. So our gun isn't doing any damage and our vision isn't spotting any crossings or spotting for our allies. We need to get our gun into the game and get active. And there's two ways you can go. You can either head over here and help out your STRV 74 or you can jump into this melee over here and try and help these guys. What's really helpful about the the turreted line of tank destroyers in the American line is you can play them like medium tanks and that's okay. Don't be afraid that even though it says TD that you only use it as a tank destroyer and snipe in the back. That doesn't have to be what you're relegated to. So personally, if I was trying to make this choice right now is I would probably go here. Your STRV 74 is trying to take down a KV-85 by himself. Adding your 2000 plus DPM into this exchange, if you both continuously fire at that KV-85, you'll save a lot of hit points on both of your tanks. All right, they just lost an FE-304, which is nice. They have a lot of TDs on that zero line. Yeah, I don't think I would push that side. I would go help the, the KV-85. So your P-43 is kind of in the same boat you are. He's kind of in the middle, not sure where to put his gun to good use. I would say if you and the P-43 actually attacked the KV-85, took him down and pushed on the T-3045M, then you could start helping your team in the field because everything else has been lit other than another Type 64. And even if that Type 64 is out here in this area, if the three of you take down the KV-85, and it won't take very long with three guns in, 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 the, in the game and active, He'll die pretty fast, and then you can roll through and kill the T-64 wherever he is, and then you can go for the T-3485M. And three to one is a really quick match, overmatch to destroy, okay? All right, looks like we're gonna go and we're gonna move. I would say that this, this move is far too late. And the reason is because your STRV-74 is already a one shot, and it looked like he just took damage, so he should have a fast enough reload to take down the rest of the KV-85. But consider that the KV-85 almost finished off the STRV-74, and he's a one-shot now for pretty much everything left on the map. If you had been active in this engagement earlier, deeper in there, and had your gun hot that whole time, the two of you would have a lot more hit points right now which means the two of you could then overmatch that Type 64 or the T-3045M that's still over there. And you'd have much better odds, because right now you have five tanks against almost every tank on the enemy team. They've only lost three plus RD. So we see there's a Type 64 over here. What needs to happen right now is you need to just push on him. You have excellent DPM, and you want to try and keep your STRV-74 alive as long as possible. I would just drive at this guy until I see a T-3045M with him. Especially since it's also helpful to realize that the Jackson actually has some pretty trolly upper front plate armor, similar to a T-3045M. 
I would just drive at this Type 64 before he can retreat and join his uh, his ally there. I would say the game is winnable, but not easily. Not anymore. You didn't do your first shot of damage until pretty much the entire game was decided already. You just lost your P-43 to artillery, which is unfortunate as well. Okay, I see we're, we're trying to move in, trying to make a play here, because we realize we've lost the 9-0 line. So you either need to fall back and try to help who's left on the 9-0 line or push through this side. I'm curious. The T-34 has been dark for a while, as has the type. Okay, the type's going to go kill your 74. If you can take the hit for him, that would be really huge. You need to get over there and take the hit. Okay, that's fine. You got to try and kill him. Don't let him get out. Track him, whatever you got to do. You have a high enough DPM that you can keep him perma-tracked. So one thing I want to point out here... We've wasted three seconds in between shots, okay? You have super high DPM, and it's really important to keep your gun firing as quick as possible to receive the least amount of damage possible, okay? Every time you went back and came forward, and I know I've I've said the opposite in previous um, videos, but in this instance, this is one of those instances where you're better off just sitting in front of his gun, because the more time you spend doing these movements, the lower your DPM is going. See, what you're not doing is you're not firing as soon as you're reloaded. And by not firing as soon as you're reloaded, you're lowering your own DPM in this point. So what you actually want to do in this scenario, let me see if I can zoom out here. Okay, so what you want to do when you're in front of a tank that you want to get your DPM in front of and you don't want to spend a bunch of time peeking and poking is you want to be sh holding the left mouse button down so you fire every time you're loaded. And what you want to do is rotate your hull in between shots to try and get the best part of your armor in front of your tank so that you can better block damage that might... You're basically trying to minimize the amount of damage that you might be taking, but just accept that you're going to be taking hits and you just want to keep this DPM as high as possible. And you want to stop moving your hull before you have to take your shot because as you rotate your hull your dispersion is growing so you want to rotate your hull and pause maybe half a second to let your dispersion come down and hit that type and from the very first shot you want to be trying to track him because you don't want him getting away with uh, any any amount of hit points in this at this point in time which we do manage and he does bounce so he did bounce he might have hit your yeah he hit your upper plate so imagine if you had been rotating this hull this whole time, making more and more of your upper plate in front of you and less and less of the side of your tank exposed, you may have actually bounced one of those other two shots that penned. Now, I would say if you're using the 90 mil, which has a much longer reload, definitely hide between shots. That's much safer than what I just explained. But the point is, is that you're making an active choice to either get damage out or try and hide between shots. And in this instance, it was better to get damage out. So now you got to try and face off a, a T-3045M. So the, the point here is that we're kind of late into having influence in the battle. The game is basically already decided and only now did we get our first kill of the game. We spent a little bit too much time in a position that was not ideal for the team. You weren't, you weren't doing damage for yourself, but you also weren't providing damage uh, for your allies by spotting. Okay, here you might be able to side scrape. Okay, he's got the, the big gun on this because this is the T-3045. So that's a bad trade right there. We took damage and we didn't put any out and we just took damage again. Okay, so you're, you're going to be able to out reload him. You're sh In this exchange here, you want to try and get two shots out for every one shot you take to maximize your damage output here. And in this instance, you probably want to try side scraping this. So you want to point your hull this way, like this, with pointing your turret this way, and then you want to slowly back out, keeping the side of your tank here at an auto bounce angle, and the upper front plate is the first shot that he has, which is relatively well armored on the Jackson. I mean, maybe not for a T-3045. And then for every shot you take damage for or you bounce, you want to make sure that you put two out and then hide again and try and bait out the next shot. That's how you want to try and play this trade here. 
That's one. Don't be hiding. Try and take. Okay, now you know you've got time for two shots. Well, if you had timed it well, you'd have time for two shots. And I see you going for the upper upper front plate here. We're using standard ammo. So actually penning the upper front plate, especially when he's kind of at an angle, a little bit of an angle here, is pretty risky. It's like it's less than a 50-50 to pen the upper front plate unless you shoot the uh, machine gun hatch here. You're better off shooting the turret face or the lower plate. The upper front plate on the T-3480, the M version specifically, the M, the non-tech tree M, is pretty trolly, just like the Jackson is. You've already bounced a shell. That's probably the one you want to try. You've already bounced another one. That's That one hit the left side of his tank there. But if you were aiming at the turret, you might have had a, a better pen there. So I see where, so what you want to do now, now that you know he's reloaded and you're reloaded, is to try and angle your armor to bait that next shot out in which I was describing earlier. Looks like he just might. Yeah. So this is the right choice from him. He's looking at his own hit points and he's looking at your hit points and he's saying, why don't I just drive out and take the hit? If I just drive out, I accept that I'm going to take damage. I can then just get the kill and I don't have to play these peaky pokey games anymore. And one thing I want to point out, let's let the damage clear, is that we actually made it easier for him to pen us. Like, I don't really know exactly where that shell went. But what I want to point out is that you instinctively kept reversing, which is fine. You're trying to hide, essentially. But what you did when you reversed is you drove the back of your tank up this rubble pile, which took your well angled armor and made it less well angled. OK, so you have a certain thickness of armor and the more angled it becomes, the thicker it effectively is. So when you tipped the back of your tank up, you tipped your armor down, which made it thinner and easier for him to penetrate. So if you wanted to maximize your survivability, you didn't want to drive up the back of this. You may have wanted to just keep your front faced him, hope that he scattered into your hull in some way um, at a slight angle so that the side of your tank is still an auto ricochet and the front of your tank is at a slight angle to increase the armor just that much more. Really, there isn't much more you could have done in that trade, but at least Trying every little bit can sometimes get you one more shot of damage in. So I think that's the end of this game. Uh, you end up losing it, um, which is, you know, it's just a learning experience. So what we've learned in this replay is if you're in a position where you're not getting damage done and you're not spotting for your team and you're not covering a crossing where you will definitely spot them if they try to cross, you're essentially just not in a position to really do anything of substance for your for your team. So you want to look at the minimap and try and make choices that will assist your team to do more damage or help you yourself do more damage. So dumpster fire, I really appreciate you. <laughs> I still like that name, <laughs> dumpster fire. I appreciate you sending in this replay for us. Um, hopefully you guys learned a little bit. It. You're actually not at a huge disadvantage with being stuck in this tank because the DPM on the base gun is actually higher than the 90 mil. Once you get to the 90 mil, you sacrifice DPM for higher alpha and better penetration. So I would still run the higher alpha gun when you get there. But uh, when you're using the base gun, it's not all that bad. So guys, if you'd like to have your replay featured on Coach's Corner, in the description of the video will be a link to my Discord. And in that Discord is a channel called hashtag Coach's Corner. And in there, you can uh, post your replays for me to take a look at. And uh, if you'd like to see more of these replays, definitely hit the subscribe and you'll be notified when uh, when more of them go live. All right. Thanks, guys. And we'll see you in the next one.